Hey guys, let's talk about Bitcoin in 2019. So people who've been watching my vlogs know that, I don't know, about six, seven months ago, near the height of Bitcoin mania, when it was at 18, 19,000 US a coin, I warned repeatedly in more than one video, two or three videos, about the dangers of quote unquote Bitcoin investing. So now we are in December, December 2018, and let's look ahead at what Bitcoin might do in 2019, what my thoughts are about that. Okay, let's talk about Bitcoin in 2019. People have been following my vlogs for a while now know that at the height of crypto Bitcoin mania, I was warning people about how it was a mania. I look at markets in psychological terms rather than fundamental terms. Fundamentals of a particular asset class will eventually come into play in terms of discovering its true value but there's always this mania phase, especially in the early days of any type of business. So let me unpack what I just said in non-nerd English. So when you're looking at investing, whether it be cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ether, etc., or whether it be tech stocks, whether it be commodities, gold, silver, oil, whatever, whenever you're looking at investing, there's two things that drive the perceived value of a particular asset class. An asset class could be commodities, gold, silver, it could be tech stocks, it could be Bitcoins, you get it. Um, the number one thing is the fundamentals, what the commodity or what the item or what the class, the asset class is actually worth. There's a certain value you can attribute to things based on uh, how they're used in the real economy. So you can attribute a value to Apple stock based on how many iPhones and computers they sell. You can attribute a value to gold and silver depending on what people are willing to pay for, you know, in the case of gold, rings that they make with it and so on. Um, and the same thing with cryptocurrencies. There's a certain value attributed to how it's used in the actual real world. Right now, it's not really used too much, although they have all these ideas about how it's going to be used. The other factor that affects, impacts the perceived value, underlying perceived value of any asset class is uh, is the psychology of it, the emotions of it. And I call it the mojo. And when something has the mojo, it will push the value of something way beyond what its true intrinsic value is. You've seen it with gold and silver, you've seen it with houses, and I think you've seen it with Bitcoin and all the other crypto currencies. If you look at the action last year when, it, when Bitcoin exploded from what was it, a thousand an ounce to psh, went up to 18, 19,000 US dollar an ounce based on pure mania and speculation. And one of the things you learn in investing, one of the oldest rules in the book is that if you see people are talking about things on the news, all over the daily news, not just the financial news, but all over the place, and people are talking about Bitcoin, and then homeless people want to buy Bitcoins and all this kind of stuff, then you know it's in a mania stage. And when something is in a mania stage, psychological mania stage, it's gonna be driven way beyond its actual intrinsic value. And I got uh, hammered to a certain extent when I put out a couple of videos about this many, many, many months ago. But so far I've been proven right, right? Because at the time, I think it was at 17,000 or 18,000 of Bitcoin. Now it's down to 4,000 or 3,500 of Bitcoin. I, haven't, I don't follow daily. and I still think it's overhyped because there's some fundamental flaws with Bitcoin technology. So people are saying, Bitcoin technology? What do you mean? You gotta understand, Bitcoin is just a technology. Bitcoin, Ether, uh, Litecoin, all these cryptocurrencies are just databases. They're, well, they reflect the database, the blockchain database. It's a style of database. It's nothing more than that. It's nothing more than that. And now the problem with Bitcoin is that it was the first attempt at a technology. It was the first attempt at a blockchain. And it has some major, major flaws. There are newer blockchain technologies, newer cryptos that are just far, far uh, superior as far as the 
core architecture is concerned. I think the big issue with Bitcoin now is that it's so energy inefficient. Apparently now to process Bitcoin takes a huge, huge, not apparently, it takes a huge amount of energy. I think it takes the amount of energy to run the entire country of Romania or something like that. I was reading in a recent article just to keep the, the Bitcoin going. If you are into preserving the ecology of the planet, you're worried about global warming, you're worried about uh, resource uh, utilization, etc., then you should be against Bitcoin because Bitcoin is a huge drain on electricity. You got to remember around the world, most of the world's electricity is driven by uh, coal, burning coal. I didn't say everywhere, but I said a lot of it is, you know, the U.S., China, a lot of the energy, a lot of the electricity generated is through coal burning. It's just the fact of the matter. It takes so much energy to just keep the Bitcoin game going that it's, just, it's going to crush itself, I think, in the end because they're far more efficient crypto currency technologies out there, far more efficient than Bitcoin, uh, that people are going to say, well, this is crazy. And you're seeing this more and more and more. So not only, as I warned many months ago, the central bankers are against the cryptos in general, at least in this form. The Federal Reserve, which is a very, uh, very powerful organization, and they warned, they warned, I don't know, what was it, was eight months ago or whatever it was, last November, I was watching uh, Bloomberg Television, which is financial news, and they said, that the Fed said, yeah, we see cryptocurrency, I'm paraphrasing, but they basically said cryptocurrency is a growing, quote, threat. And if you know anything about the Fed, I've been watching them for years, they're very careful about their language. They, very, very, very careful about their language because what they say can move markets in tremendous directions. And so when they use a strong term like threat, which I've never heard them say that before, um, you know, you know that stuff is going to go hit the fan, right? You know that something's going down. And sure enough, all these central bankers are coordinated and started putting the clamps down on the crypto market because the crypto market is used by a lot of criminals because they, they want to they wanna be able to do their stuff in anonymity and they want to be held accountable. And you may be into that, uh, your feeling is you know, anti-government, but you, know, you don't want criminal organizations, vast criminal organizations, running rampant because it's going to cause a lot of problems in society. So you don't want that. And uh, governments don't want that. So they're going to be clamping down more and more on cryptos. So when I saw the Fed say, you know, cryptocurrency a growing threat, I had, we had Litecoin machines, my partner and I, we immediately sold them. <laughs> Boom, gone. And sure enough, it was a good move. Uh, if you're against, if you're worried about global warming, if you're worried about the environment, you don't want to get into Bitcoin because it's, it's a huge task. In it, 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 ta it takes a lot of energy out of the system. And because there's more and more articles talking about that, you can be sure there's going to be more and more political pressure against crypto in general because Bitcoin, though it's the earliest cryptocurrency, so it's, not, it's the least uh, refined one, um, it reflects and it drives all the other ones as well. Because what you're going to see in investing, asset classes will move together in the market. So if, one, if oil starts to go bad, then they all go bad. If shipping, the dry shippers start going bad in terms of the price action in the market, they all go down. If technology starts going down, they seem to all go down together, some more than others. But just look at the recent route in the tech sector. All the tech companies, they all go at the same time. It's just our psychology to how humans work. Asset classes move together. That's just the way it is. So uh, I'm recording this December 1st, 2018. In summary, I think Bitcoin in 2019 is probably going to continue to be a stair step downwards, as I predicted, uh, whatever, last November or something. You can check the exact date in the videos. I'm not an investment counselor. I'm not here to give you advice. This is what I think. You do what you got to do. And uh, I know some people have made a tremendous amount of money trading in the cryptos, but they are very sophisticated in that they're able to monitor the flow of the trading and they're able to do something called an arbitrage and they, you can make a lot of money doing that. My prediction though with that is as the cryptocurrencies continue to slide in the price, you're seeing people are going to, less and less people are going to be interested in that market.
Because once somebody gets burned in a particular trade, somebody gets burned in a particular investment, they don't typically go back in for many, many years, if ever. So when we had that big hype and run up of cryptos, where Ethereum was well over a thousand and Bitcoin was near 20,000 US, like 19,000 US and change, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All those people who bought going up and they've since got wiped out because they can bet you, bet you that most of them have stayed in thinking, oh, we'll go back up, we'll go back up. I had a friend of mine who, uh, who bought into crypto and he was in, believe the story of crypto, the whole, the story about fighting the government and having our own money. And it's the same argument, by the way, that gold and silver people use way back in, you know, 10 years ago or eight years ago, whatever it was. And um, I remember when crypto started to crash and it went from 19,000 to 17,000 US dollar for Bitcoin. I said, yeah. I said, you see how fast the Bitcoin fell? He goes, yeah, yeah, it was a buying opportunity. So they, he bought at that price point, 17. Now it's, it's at four now, 4,000 US or 3,200, 3,500 US. I forget what it is now. I think it's around 4,000 US at today. So he's got, he got totally wiped. So I'm not telling you what to do. Bitcoin could do a dead cat bounce, pop back up. Who knows, right? Uh, I don't have a crystal ball, but I've seen markets before. I understand the psychology of things. And uh, so far, my predictions are rolling out as I predicted. It seems to be doing what gold and silver did after it hit its peak and its crescendo. It's stair stepping down. All right, I hope you found this view video useful and um, that's about it. Love my bingo. Soft egg, mustard, mayo, lettuce, tomato, butter, blueberry, bagel, and of course, a hot coffee. This is what Steph loves in the morning. <laughs>